A lot of data is collected and available in Excel files. Now, data collection sometimes require collaboration between different parties, whether it's between departments in a company or between a company and its suppliers and customers. Now, the challenge with data in Excel is that it's manually created, so it can have errors. Second, Excel is not the best format as an input into to load a data into a database. Uh, data may be tabular, but it may not start on the first row. Uh, there could be multiple tabs, and it is not necessarily always in a clean uh, table grid with nicely formatted columns. DVSum data management provides a simple low code workflow based solution to process Excel files, validate data, and export it into a database loadable format. Let's see the demo. So let's say I receive railroad performance data from a third party site on a weekly basis. And my goal is to extract data from this Excel file and validate and load it into a table in a database. So let's look at the file. So here I have two tabs, performance and accidents. Uh, the performance data is starting in row number three. Um, and I do see that there are columns. And similarly, accidents data is uh, it's a sample data. However, these are not necessarily database loadable columns. So they have spaces, et cetera, within them. Let's, uh, let's see how do we uh, process this data using DBSum. If I open up DBSum, it's a role-based multi-user application. First, I go to the uh, data preparation file upload section. And here uh, there are, you can, we've created folders so you can manage your files. Uh, in this case, we'll use Excel workflow demo and let's load the template that we were looking at. So DVSum has uh, loaded this Excel and tried to process it. Let's see if it is able to read the data correctly. So the file is loaded. Uh, let's look at the properties file. So the properties file is the definition of how DVSum read this Excel file. So here I see uh, tabs, two tabs. So it found the performance tab. And in the performance tab, uh, it is it did not recognize the name of the columns because the data started on row number three. And in the accidents tab, it did identify because the data was starting on row number one. All right, that's great. So let's go ahead and uh, tell DVSum that you need to skip the first three row, first two rows. Let's go ahead and save it. And now let's load the data again, the same file, and see if it is able to recognize the data correctly. And this time, as we can see, it is able to identify the columns, uh, railroad region, category, subcategory, measure, variables, et cetera. So now we know that DVSum is configured to read the data as data. It has uh, similarly, it has already uh, converted spaces and special characters into a reusable formatted column. Let's go ahead and close this. And now we are going to uh, quickly profile the data so that we can define certain validation rules. I go to profiling section, I select my data source. I see that there are two tables. So now DVSum, for all practical purposes, this, uh, this Excel file, uh, DVSum treats it like two tables. So I can go ahead and select these and go ahead and run profile. At this point, uh, it, it, it reads all of the data, runs uh, different statistics against the data, and we'll shortly see what those statistics are and add the business rule. So let's complete the profiling. Let's go ahead and first select the performance tab. And really, I mean, we're not interested in actually looking at the profile of the data. The point is this allows us to now define the uh, business rules for validation. So I click on data quality. Let's call it performance tab validation. And let's set certain rules. So we want our railroad region can never be empty. And the railroad region should be um, a defined list of things. So you can also create reference dictionaries. I've gone ahead and created a railroad code dictionary that I want to apply as a validation against any data that I'm receiving. So let's go ahead and add it. And similarly for a measure, uh, I mean, the measures here are important because that defines your metric in your database. So you want to make sure that we are only receiving the same uh, set of measures. The measures are also not empty. And I define the list of measures 
simply as you know the full list of measures that are available so you can dynamically choose the list of unique values as a validation rules let's go ahead and save it and now i'm going to run the rules just to confirm that there are no exceptions in the template and that becomes our baseline so at this point again dvsum is running these four rules that i have created and it finds that okay everything looks good let's go ahead and do the same for the accidents tab so i go to accidents tab i click on data quality i say ep724 accidents data validation and again, in this case, uh, I want to define that uh, my railroad code should not be empty. That's a key important measure. And I will use the same reference dictionary for the railroad codes. Let's go ahead and save it. All right. So now let's go ahead and create a pipeline to see how the, we can process this data on a regular basis. So I click and go to workflows. A workflows capability in DVSum allows you to define essentially any business process. So for the interest of time, I've created a simple workflow to show, to demonstrate this feature. So uh, a, a workflow consists of a start and end, of course, and there are process steps. You can have uh, forks in the process, like something completes, then it can go to multiple steps. Uh, we can have multiple steps completing before you start the next step. So it's a, extremely configurable and a quick drag and drop interface. Uh, a workflow itself, is consists of step uh, or steps consists of tasks. So in this case, I have uploaded, uh, and these are smart tasks. I mean, they do actually do stuff. They are not just documentation. So in this case, my first task is to upload an Excel file in future, let's say on a weekly basis. Uh, so let's see what it looks like. So in this case, I said file upload task. I uh, post the files to the same folder, right? New versions of the files after processing. And this is the template that uh, I'm using. And the other one is the file validation task. So in this case, uh, we want to uh, show all the different uh, the different two validation tasks that are associated with these files. So in this case, it has chosen those, ro those rules already. And, and that's pretty much it. Now we are ready to execute this workflow and see this in action. So let, I'm going to publish this workflow and let's start an execution. So let's say this is set up. I mean, it took us a few minutes to set this whole thing up. Now, on a weekly basis, uh, again, there could be different ways on how files are received. Maybe an analyst or a data manager downloads the file from the third party, receives it, and then he initiates a workflow. Uh, alternatively, you can also configure uh, in DVSum that you know when I receive a file, I want to trigger a workflow through an API. All right. In this in this demo, we'll start the execution from uh, from the interface itself. So let's say I received a new file for January 26th, and I want to walk it through this process. I select the workflow, I give it a name. Uh, you can also define SLAs in the process that a certain process has to be finished within a certain time frame, and it can generate alerts, et cetera. In this case, we'll ignore that and say this is due by Friday, and let's initiate the workflow. So a copy of that workflow is created, and uh, the first step, is if it is assigned to a specific group of people uh, or users within a group, they will all get notification. Anybody of them can pick up and start executing the workflow. In this case, for the demo purposes, I'm going to um, I'm going to execute that. So it tells me what the two steps are. I say, okay, I'm starting this. Let's go ahead and upload the file. And this time, I'm going to choose the latest file. And DVSum is loading it, applying the pre-processes. It's done. Let's go ahead and execute the rules that we created before. So in this case, uh, DVSum is saying that okay, there is some exceptions in the data. Let's take a look. So I see issues with the performance sheet validation. And I see that there is one row that was received where the measure was empty. So again, I can choose to then delete this data ignore it, but then it might fail during the database load process. Uh, but at least I have visibility to it. And then let's look at the accidents data. And in this case, it said, okay, there is an invalid value. So I, I believe our reference dictionary said for Chicago Central as Chicago, but uh, this accidents data may be received from another uh, um, third party, uh, not necessarily the performance data, and it might have a different coding. And in this case, it was CC, and it is highlighting that these are exceptions. 
All right. So again, there is there are ways in which you can say that you know I want to send it for approval, or in this case, I want to uh, say that you know I I want to just go ahead and finish this process. So I go ahead and press submit, and it says yes. You you have some exceptions. I said that's okay. And at this point, uh, you know I have the the clean version of the file. I I shouldn't say clean version. The formatted or a more database loadable format of the file is available. Uh, in terms of loading it into the database, there are uh, there are multiple ways. By default, the file is created in a shared drive. And if you have an ETL process to pick this data and load into a database, you can do that. Uh, you can trigger it through DVSum. Uh, and alternatively, within DVSum also, there is a way, there are uh, mechanisms where we can configure so that you can load the data directly from this file and uh, publish it into a table in a database. Okay. And once this workflow is complete, let's say I can submit it. And now I have successfully uploaded a new version of a file. So to recap, DBSum data management provides a simple low code workflow based solution to process Excel files, validate data and export it into a database loadable format.